By supporting our channel you support legal content on YouTube. Subscribe, click the bell and leave a like. We wish you a pleasant viewing. The northern hemisphere of planet Earth is the almost exclusive home to a singular kind of woodland. A forest that changes its appearance as time passes. Stripped naked by winter, yet dressed in splendid gold in autumn. Vibrantly green in spring, but shadowy and mysterious during summer. Such mutability is a condition of a variable climate which requires its inhabitants to find strategies to endure everything from polar cold to tropical heat to pervading damp, snow and rain. And all in the space of just 12 months. Deciduous forests can be prodigiously benevolent or harsh environments depending on the season. Their shady interiors house a range of fauna and flora as varied and variable as the forest itself. Deciduous, or broadleaf forests, are a type of temperate woodland that extend across the east and west of the United States and Canada, eastern Asia, Patagonia, and the heart of Europe. Deciduous forests are unique ecosystems, marked by constant cyclical change. The leaves of their trees come together to form a dense canopy above and a dark, cool habitat below. Temperate forests grow in areas of abundant rainfall and moderate temperatures with a marked seasonal pattern. Beech, hornbeam, oak and lime trees coexist in swathes that extend across the northern temperate regions of the planet, creating mysterious, almost magical landscapes. Part of that magic and mystery is due, no doubt, to the never-ending changes they undergo. Deciduous forests have a complex structure, enriched by a great diversity of plant species. Some of these forests contain hundreds of species of trees and shrubs, all of which provide food and shelter for an incredible range of animals. Outside of the tropics, these forests boast the greatest diversity of insects and birds on Earth.
Each season has its own clearly defined characteristics, its own personality, which is clearly reflected in the forest and its inhabitants. Each time of year has its own protagonists. In winter, the deciduous forest seems literally to have died. Snow, ice and cold are inescapable visitors to the deciduous forest. The winter strips the trees completely, leaving them perfectly bare. It seems impossible that they are alive, that they are only sleeping under the ice and snow. The environmental conditions are very harsh and indeed may be fatal. Only those who cannot leave remain. This is a difficult time for any of the inhabitants of the forests to survive. Freezing temperatures and continuous rainfall cloak the forest, its physiognomy altering from one minute to the next. Only the bark of the trees, the lichens that grow on them, fallen branches and some seeds serve as food for both large and smaller animals. The European bison can withstand the inclemency of the season thanks to its dense fur coat. The deciduous forest is its true home. In winter, the bison gather in herds of more than 50 individuals to roam the forest in search of fruits, roots and old pastures beneath the snow. At this time of year, they will even take advantage of tree bark, lichens and fallen branches. Any scrap is welcome to help survive the scarcities of winter. Squirrels spend most of the winter hibernating, waking only for a few hours on sunny days to replenish their energy sources. The squirrels have it somewhat easier than the bison. They may find pine seeds scattered beneath the pine trees or acorns hidden underground. Surviving the marked seasonal changes requires an intelligent and effective strategy. Many birds escape these frozen forests by flying thousands of kilometers. Others seek refuge in the warmer, sheltered areas of the forest itself. The trees of these forests know how to fight the harshest of seasons. They simply go to sleep and wait vital reserves of energy stored inside their trunks and roots. The balance between life and death is a matter of time in the winter wood. With every day that passes, the deer and the rest of the fauna are one step closer to survival. The winter is not eternal, it's just one season.
spring arrives full of haste. Forest strategy now takes on an increasingly rapid pace, allowing all to live. Higher temperatures and increased moisture mean that the trees need considerable surface areas for perspiration. This is achieved through leaves that are broad and large. And they must operate at full speed in order to take advantage of the few months they have in which to grow, produce flowers and fruits, and build up energy reserves. It's a race against time that will end with the arrival of autumn. While the leaves are growing on the trees, the forest floor also flourishes, caressed by the sun. The herds of bison break up in early spring, reducing to numbers of just 10 or 20 individuals. Now food is abundant. Succulent grasses grow in meadows and the undergrowth provides delicious mixed salads of tender leaves. At the same time, millions of birds that were driven south by the winter hurry to return in order to choose mates and build their nests. In the southerlymost regions of the European deciduous forests, birds of tropical origin take up residence. Colourful European rollers and bee-eaters are clearly visitors from the south. The rollers replenish their forces by hunting on the ground. Then they look for hollows and the old nests of other birds among the trees. Both rollers and bee-eaters exhibit complex mating behavior. The males bring their females gifts in the form of insects. It's a good way of knowing if your suitor is a capable hunter, able to feed your future offspring. The bee-eaters hunt on the wing, capturing prey which may be any of the hundreds of species of insects that inhabit these forests and grasslands in the air. Once the mating pair has formed, they strengthen their bonds close to their nest. Other birds have been more pragmatic and are already feeding their young. For pairs of green finches, spring in the forest is an intense time. They may produce up to three consecutive clutches of chicks before summer. Many birds in the deciduous forest are grateful to the woodpecker's habit of building a new nest each year. Other birds can occupy last year's holes. The black woodpecker is one of the largest and also one of the shyest. Its powerful beak allows it to carve through rotten logs in search of insect larvae. 
The energy chain in the deciduous forest includes even dead trees, home to many xylophagus or wood-eating beetles. And so the black woodpeckers can find food for their chicks, thanks to the dead trees, as these larvae make up their diet. deciduous temperate forest is a complex web of relationships. The bison are now enjoying a rich and varied supply of food and their droppings give rise to a new and unexpected source of life, which began as the leaves of the forest and meadows. Millions of different species of beetles take advantage of the undigested remains of their feces to feed and lay their eggs. These beetles and their larvae will in turn be the food of countless birds, reptiles and other insects. Along with them, buzzing among the leaf litter and mosses that upholster the forest, an infinity of invertebrates, representing the first animal link in the food chain. The variety of insects depends largely on the presence of water and the degree of moisture. Deciduous forests have a permanent network of streams and rivers. And close to the water, among the roots of the trees, live otters. These aquatic mammals of the mustelid family are frequent neighbours in the forest. Otters take advantage of the food resources that the rivers that run through the forest provide. They're experts in catching large fish, but also hunt other small mammals and even crayfish. A large trout is enough to fill the otter's stomach for a whole day. Another predator that patrols the forest riverbanks is the kingfisher. His speciality? Harpoon fishing. Kingfishers do not compete for the same prey as otters, as the bird is a featherweight that feeds on smaller fish and crayfish. The shells of these crustaceans are so hard that the birds must soften them by beating them against a branch before swallowing.
The forests and their waterways are so intermingled that sometimes it's hard to tell where one ends and the other begins. And it's just this unsure, muddy territory that wild boar prefer. It is the seasons that mark the rhythm of life in these forests, and also the diet of their inhabitants. Bears are fully aware of the seasonality of most food here. Correspondingly, they adjust their diet throughout the year. Grass and flowers sprout in the spring. Fleshy fruits ripen toward the end of summer. Nuts are on the menu in autumn. It's now cherry season. The end of summer merges smoothly with the start of autumn. Fruit begins to ripen and food is abundant. The weather is mild and damp. It's time for mushrooms, acorns and sweet energy giving fruit. The floor of the deciduous forest is one of the richest and most fertile of any woodland. There, the nutriment-rich leaf litter accumulates and is gradually broken down through the incessant labor of insects, microorganisms and fungi. One of the most beautiful and arresting mutations in the plant world, the forest leaves slowly change color. This is an essential process in the survival of the deciduous forest. The trees cut off supplies to their own leaves, which, now isolated, die little by little. Red and brown pigments within the leaves begin to appear as the green chlorophyll disappears. In other cases, waste substances show their presence in shades of purple and vermilion. The forest fills with millions of dying leaves over a period of a few weeks, turning it into one of the most beautiful places on the planet. It's a time of abundance. Animals eat and build up reserves to help them endure the coming winter. The circle of life is strengthened once more. In the interior of the forest, 
energy is exchanged with intensity. The tawny owl, a forest bird of prey, takes advantage of the autumn litters of mice, hunting them with ease in the undergrowth. Winter is coming. The circle closes again as the cold paralyzes life in the forest. Temperate deciduous forests, which originally covered almost all of North America, much of Europe and East Asia, had the misfortune of growing in the regions most exploited by mankind. And so they became one of the most altered habitats and in turn, scarcest resources on our planet. Yet despite this, remnants of these forests persist, where seemingly opposite ecosystems overlap through the course of the year. Cold, silent, deadly and harsh in winter. Yet warm, damp and effervescent with life in the summer. A prolific combination whose maximum splendor is achieved in the broadleaf deciduous forest. Thank you for watching. If you liked the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a like and comment. Support legal content on YouTube.